What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are all doing well. Today's video is going to be a Q&A slash get ready with me. I asked you guys on Instagram and here on YouTube to basically ask me whatever you want about me, about my life, about YouTube, about beauty, about luxury, anything. And so I have all of your questions and we're going to be doing a Pat McGrath style get ready with me. I just got this. What is this called? The Pat McGrath Labs Dark Star 006 V3 VR Sextra Galactic kit. This is one of her recent eye kits that she launched on her site maybe about a couple of weeks ago and I thought you know what got this in the sale be fun to just kind of try this out with you guys while I answer some questions. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up it really helps out my channel especially if you like these kind of Q&A style videos and with that let's get into the Q&A. Okay party people I've got you up close I am bare face and we'll see how this goes. Hopefully this is fun for you guys. Hopefully you have some fun learning a little bit about me. I'm going to show you real quick all of the Pat McGrath products that I'm going to be using and I'll try and like tell you as I put them on my face what I'm using. But let's do like a quick run through. Okay, obviously we have the star of the show. This is the eye kit. I haven't even opened it yet. I haven't swatched it yet. So we're going to be doing that together. Maybe it'll look cute. Maybe it'll look gross. We'll see. I'm basically going to be getting my nails done after this. It's a Friday afternoon and then probably go out and get some dinner or something something after that but I also have her foundation one of my faves obviously in the color light six I also have Pat's concealer this is in the color light three we know that Pat doesn't have any bronzers so I'm going to be using the Victoria Beckham bronzing brick but I do have one of her blushes here this is one of the new ones that I got in her sale and this is in flirtatious this is so beautiful this is like the blush that I didn't know I needed. This is kind of like a cool tone nude, absolutely perfection. Then we're gonna throw it back to her highlighting stick. Nude Skin Fetish Highlighter Balm. So it's got like the nude color on one side and the gloss on the other side. And then I actually am gonna be topping it with this. This is, this is one of the first products that she ever launched with her brand. It came in like basically one of these kinds of kits, except it was for the face. And as you can see, it's kind of like all gross and hard panned and whatnot, but this is amazing. So we're gonna top it off with this. I also brought out Mothership One Subliminal. You know, in case we need to like go into some mattes and really like, you know, build up a look. I have a mini of her Dark Star Mascara, and then I've got a bunch of lip products here, which I will I will tell you guys what they are when I put them on my lips. All right, let's get started. You guys know I'm good at talking, but like, can I talk about myself while putting on makeup? We will see. <laughs> Okay, so the first question is, what led to your interest in makeup? That's a really good question. I think I've always been very interested in makeup. A little bit about me, like I am originally from Southern New Jersey, kind of like the Jersey Shore area. That's where I get my big personality. I grew up in a very like Greek American immigrant household. In my family, we just happen to be all women. Like I just grew up in a family of all women. So I think that, you know, being feminine and kind of celebrating femininity was always just like a big part of my life. And I really, you know, I, I, I looked up to my mom, my grandma, my cousins, my aunts that were always around. Like we always had family in the house. I basically grew up with my younger sister who's two years younger than me and my older cousin who's three years older than me. My grandfather always used to take us to CVS and we would get like gum and candy and sometimes he would buy us like little toys. And in the toy section, they always had like little kid makeup and I always wanted the little kid makeup. And he would buy it for me. And as like a four year old, I used to like put it all over my face and like do my blush and all of that. And so I feel like that was always really encouraged from the time that I was little. It was just something that I was interested in and my family just like allowed me to be that way. And that definitely has really stayed with me throughout my entire life. I was always like the sibling or the cousin that was making my other family members do like spa nights. I would make my own like skincare and masks and I would make little skincare manuals. I wanted to do people's makeup. Like I was always doing these things when I was little. I also would consider myself like somewhat artistic and for me, makeup is that artistic thing. I love the fact that I can do something every single day to my face and I can mix colors and I can create a certain look and a certain vibe. And then at the end of the day, I can wash it off, right? It's kind of like fashion. Fashion is the same thing to me as well. That kind of segues into the next question, which is why and how did you start 
your YouTube channel. I think it's important to note that I've always really loved, I'm going in with the concealer now, obviously. I've always really loved mentoring people, showing people how to do things. Once again, I grew up in a family with a lot of women and in a family that had a really big sense of community. And so I like things that sort of draw me into a community and I obviously I love makeup and I got into watching YouTube because I also really love luxury. I started off watching like handbag reviews because I was just interested in handbags. When I was a kid I really loved watching QVC. I used to force my sister to watch QVC with me. Still have never bought anything from QVC but I just love to watch people sell things. I just like to watch people talk about products like i've always been interested in that i think it's so fun i love to give my thoughts on things and i love to share common interests with other people and so i got into watching like luxury handbag and fashion youtube and then slowly i was like oh okay they have the same thing but for makeup i'm gonna watch that because it's, it wasn't the same as it was now. This was kind of like after I graduated from college, it wasn't something that was really on my radar. And Instagram also wasn't really that big of a thing until around like my senior year of college maybe. So getting back to the question, I was really into YouTube. I just really always wanted to start a YouTube channel, but I never did, you know? It's like, especially if you work full time, it's hard to be able to figure out how to do that. I was like, oh, I don't have a camera. I don't know how to do it. Then the pandemic hit. And I feel like a lot of us had these sort of moments where we reevaluated the things that we spend time on. And for me, I was always somebody that I always did a lot of activities, right? All of a sudden, I didn't have those activities anymore. And my day to day was very different. I had a lot more time at home. I didn't have to commute anymore. I didn't have to meal prep anymore. My whole schedule just changed. And then things that I used to do, like for example, I used to be a Zumba instructor. Shout out to all my Zumba mommies out there. If you guys love Zumba, I used to be a Zumba instructor. I'm technically still licensed to do it, but I really Really loved twice a week being able to see the same women over and over in my class and like show them the dances. If you guys aren't familiar, Zumba is basically a form of dance fitness. So I was essentially a fitness instructor. And I loved just being able to teach people something and really be able to see how happy it made them and kind of build that fitness community and that dance community in my class and just like have those good vibes twice a week. I loved really showing people how to do something. And when you're a Zumba instructor, you also have to learn how to get people to have fun and how to get people excited. And so I really missed that. And I said, what's something that I can do that I am passionate about, that I've always wanted to do, that I can sort of replace these activities that I've lost. And for me, it started with Instagram. I'm gonna bronze up my face with the Victoria Beckham bronzing brick. I promise I'll do a review on these guys, but there's so many releases, so you gotta give me some time. And this is in the shade 02. So what I did is I started off with my Instagram account because I said, you know what? This is easy for me to do. I can learn the ropes and I can really see if I like content creation. So I started off on Instagram and I was like, okay, I'll just start posting photos of my makeup. I really just wanted to talk to people about makeup. A lot of the people in my family and my friends, they like makeup, but they're not, they're not like us. They're not like obsessed with makeup and all of the new releases. And so I really didn't have anybody to talk to about that. And especially with COVID and everything, you just, I just wasn't interacting with people as much on a daily basis in the office and all that kind of stuff. So I said, you know what, I'm gonna start this so that I can just have a fun community of people to talk about makeup and for me to share my thoughts. So anyway, I started doing this on Instagram and even though I didn't have a lot of followers, I was super consistent and I found myself really engaging with stories and really wanting to post longer format content. And I was doing it first in my stories to see, can I create this? Do I like it? Can I do it? And it turns out that I loved it. I really liked it a lot. Like I literally couldn't stop. I loved posting content to my stories. But the thing about Instagram is that it's really not well suited to long form content. And that was the content that I wanted to make is more of the YouTube style. And so one day actually I had made a 15 minute video 
for my IGTV, which I don't even know if that's a thing anymore, guys. I went to post it to Instagram and I got really, really frustrated because it took so long to upload for those types of videos. And every time I uploaded it, it would be just the worst quality. Like I couldn't figure out why the video quality was bad. And I got so frustrated. I said, you know what? I'm tired of this. I'm just going to go start my YouTube channel and upload this video and see if it uploads in a better quality on YouTube. And then I can link to it. So I did that. And you guys can still go to my channel right now. Go to my videos. You can still see that. And it's actually a rundown of all of the Pat McGrath mothership palettes. And I just give you like my quick thoughts on each of them. And I tell you what I think. And I, I kind of tell you which one is my favorite. And so that's how I got started. And like, I noticed that people started watching it and I said, you know what, let me give this a try. Like, I'm just, I'm going to give it a try. And I, I, I never look back. Like, I just love making this longer form content, even if it's kind of long and chatty, like this video, that's how I got started. Like I basically just got frustrated. I was pushed to do it. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do a little bit of research, figure out how I can make videos with my phone. I'm going to buy a ring light and some more lights and all that good stuff. And I'm just going to try my best. I'm going to see if people like it. I'm going in with flirtatious and I have a Wayne Goss holiday brush here. This is so pretty. And a little bit about the name. I thought for years of like what you can see I'm getting a little flushed here because I'm like talking about things I'm excited about this is totally normal this is just how my skin is guys I really thought for years like what am I gonna call my channel I thought really hard about what I wanted it to be called and ultimately I called it Sophia Sees Beauty number one because I wanted my name to be in it because if people referred to me as Sophia Sees Beauty at least they knew my name it, it would let you guys know that my name is Sophia. I also really liked the alliteration. I felt like it kind of rolled off the tongue. I wanted it to have the word beauty in it. I kind of thought about making it like Sophia loves luxury, something like that. But at the end of the day, I called it Sophia Sees Beauty because I really wanted this channel or whatever I talk about to be about the beauty that I see in the world. I didn't want it to be Sophia is beauty or Sophia has beauty. I wanted it to be Sophia Sees Beauty because it's about things that I see that I'm excited about. And it could be makeup, it could be luxury, it could be nature, it could be any other kind of beauty in this world. It could be the beauty of other people, the beauty of community, anything. And I know that sounds a little bit cheesy, but I really wanted it to be me projecting things that I'm excited about, things that I find are beautiful and less about like my beauty. This channel is not about me looking cute. This channel is about me connecting with you guys and telling you about products that I'm interested in, things that I think you're gonna like. It's about saving you money. It's about being YouTube friends, you know? So comment down below and let me know what you think about that. But that's kind of, I don't know, I just it just came to me one day and that's what I named my channel. I think I'm going to save the eyes for last, which maybe I'll regret that, but <laughs> I want to, I want to keep answering your questions before I dive into that kit. So the number one question that actually was asked, I'm going in with the stick now, is what do you do? What is your job? What is your career? Do you do you, YouTube full time? And the answer is no, I actually don't. I don't do YouTube full time. Although some weeks I put out just as many videos as those that do it full time. So I could understand why a lot of people are asking me that question. So I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about what I do for my career. So I actually work in the tech industry. I've worked in the tech industry for about 10 years now. I graduated in May of 2013, so I'm 31 years old. I just turned 31 in March. Hey, to those of you who are in your 30s. So yeah, I work in the tech industry and my role is called product manager. And what a product manager does is essentially you are the person at the company. Think of any kind of like tech or e-commerce company. Basically, the product manager is the person whose responsibility it is to work with the engineers, but also on the business side and also on the design side. And you're basically the person that kind of brings all those teams together decides and figures out what are the big business opportunities from a product standpoint and then it's your job to make sure that those things get done so you're basically like the ringleader between many functions of the business and you have to be very organized very strategic very analytical you kind of have to really figure out how to make the most of the resources that you have prioritize figure out how to do a lot with a little bit so these are all things that i'm i'm already good at i'm all really 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 organized i'm very tech savvy 
So it's not like the tech part of this isn't too, too hard for me to figure out. It's honestly just like figuring out what kind of content that you guys like. I actually have a pretty strong background in e-commerce. So I'm very, very familiar with e-commerce experiences, with marketing, with um, search engine optimization, all of those things. Like my background is in business and information systems. So yeah, I basically work for a tech company and most of my experience has been more on kind of the consumer e-commerce side. But essentially, yes, I do work full time. My job is fully remote, so I'm home all the time. I have a little bit more flexibility in how I manage my hours. Now I will say I do work pretty long hours because I work for a tech company that has kind of like a startup -y culture. So my hours are very long. I'm already used to putting a lot of hours into my job, but I'm super Super ambitious and so I do have to kind of balance my full-time job with YouTube and I won't lie guys it is you know it's not the easiest thing we're going in with the highlighter now and I think that this was the original brush that it came with from Pat McGrath it's like a little wispy brush so yeah guys short answer uh, I don't do this full time. It's basically a second job. I'm basically working two jobs. That's like how many hours it takes. I would say each video probably takes about five or so hours to make. When you think about it, like in between the planning, like the video setup, the filming, the editing, the thumbnail, adding all the little like pictures and cutaways and all of the links, like, doing the links, just having the links there, like hoping people will kind of like, maybe like your video and click and buy something. All that stuff takes extremely long to do. And then on top of that, I'm making Instagram content to complement that. And then I'm posting it out, I'm promoting my videos, I'm like telling you guys when there's sales, I'm like posting links out, all that stuff. All that stuff takes time. And I'm definitely not complaining because I love every minute of it. I love my um, day job, I really like what I do, but I also like doing YouTube. Like I'm just so obsessed with this. I, I love doing this. One of the other questions was like, would you consider doing this full time? Absolutely, I would consider doing this full time. For me, when I say doing it full time, I don't necessarily mean like all I do is film videos. For me, I've always wanted to start my own business. I've always been an entrepreneur. I've worked for tech startups and tech companies my entire life in college. I always had a lot of like entrepreneurial pursuits. And so I would love to have my own business. I would love to just be self-employed and run my own business full time. And to me, this is a business. This is a brand. And it's so, so fun to be able to interact with you guys and kind of build this, even though I've only been doing this for a couple of months, 100% I would do this full time. I still love my day job, but if I had the choice to kind of do this all day, every day, I definitely would. Yeah, why not? Why not give it a chance? If I don't like it, I can always do something else. That's that's what I've learned in these past couple of years. Don't be afraid to take a chance and do something. You can always go back to what you were doing before. I'll try to combine these next two questions because a lot of you guys were asking me, what does your typical day look like? And then some of you guys were also asking, I'm just using the Kosas brow pop, by the way. But yeah, someone, other people were asking, how do you balance everything? Like, how do you balance your real job with YouTube? How does it affect your significant relationships? Like, are you married? Do you have kids? All of that kind of stuff. So in terms of my typical day, I live by myself with my cat, Minnie. Surprisingly, none of you guys asked about my baby. Minnie is my cat. You guys probably see her. I think she's, I don't know if you guys can see her. She's napping right there. It's her nappy time and then she'll wake up and want attention. But anyway, I live by myself. I do have a boyfriend. He lives in Boston also. I live in Boston, Massachusetts. My typical day is, <laughs> I basically just work all day, guys. I get up pretty early. I get up at like six or seven. I check on all of my comments. You guys notice I try and respond to you pretty quickly. I'm usually filming first thing in the morning, like when the light comes up. It's been very difficult during the winter to create YouTube content because we just don't have that many hours of sunlight here in Massachusetts. Yeah, I basically get up in the morning. I film for a little bit. I try to get everything that I need for the video. And then I am basically working right here where my desk is. Like I'm working from home all day in the evening. I usually go on my Peloton or I go to the gym and I lift weights. Essentially, I'm like eating dinner, working more and editing YouTube videos. Like that's my average day throughout the week. I still make time for friends. I still have um, other like interests and things that I do on the weekends. I love to just kind 
kind of relax with my boyfriend, relax with friends. I love having game nights. I like to, I try to go to church on Sundays when I can. I have a church here in Boston that I go to. I love going out to brunch. I'll tell you guys a little bit more about some of my interests, but honestly guys, my typical day is not really that interesting. Like it's really just, it's just like your guys. Like it's not, it's not that different. GTL baby, except minus the tanning. I, I really don't get that much sleep. I probably go to bed at like midnight or 1 a.m. and then I get up at like 7 a.m. It's fine, don't feel bad for me guys. Like I, I love doing this, but yeah, this takes up a lot of time. And I think in terms of like, how do I balance it all? Honestly, I just have to be extremely organized. I have a little Trello board of all of the different videos that I'm making for you guys. I have a calendar. This is like basic things that I do in my job, so it's not really out of the ordinary for me. I'm usually having to make a six month roadmap for all of like the software projects that we're gonna build for some aspect of the company, et cetera. And I have a lot of like stakeholders, you know, pressuring me about why are we building this and why are we building that? So it's like, I'm so used to this kind of organization. So I really just have to be super organized. It definitely though, it definitely can be very exhausting and I can totally see, I'm trying to just like sculpt my brows a little bit with this foundation. It definitely can, can burn you out. I can totally see why people get burnt out because it's so so hard to grow it's so hard to grow i think i was on instagram for like nine months and i only had 300 followers and i was making content every single day it's just so hard to get noticed with youtube it's been a lot easier like my growth has been a lot easier because i understand seo i feel like this is the kind of content i'm meant to make and i already kind of know the niche i know i I'm, a, I'm one of you guys like i'm just one of you guys and i decided to make content but it can be very exhausting because you have to be so consistent you just have to be really fast like if you don't get the product first and get your review up first people don't watch it that's kind of the sad truth and so it's just hard to grow i think it's pretty easy for youtubers when when you see youtubers like go on vacation and be like sorry guys i'm taking a vacation we're all like okay cool take your vacation but when it's your business and when you're doing it you're just thinking oh my gosh like I'm gonna miss three uploads and then people are gonna forget about me and no one's gonna forget about you but the fact of the matter is is that every time you're not posting or you're not getting the product ASAP then you're just kind of losing out on an opportunity and so it's hard it takes a lot of money it takes a lot of money you know investing in the equipment actually isn't the most money it's like buying the makeup the expedited shipping even right now like I'm waiting for a new product to arrive I'm keeping an eye on my package notifications because as soon as it comes if it's light enough it's probably too late now like I will take that and I will immediately start filming so there is a little bit of like anxiety that comes with having this job again I'm not complaining I'm just kind of being I'm giving you guys like the good the bad and the ugly in this video all right and so how does it affect my life I think that I enjoy making this and so maybe for you when you're done with work you might be cuddling with your husband and watching Netflix like I just don't watch. like I don't watch TV I just watch YouTube I have these projects but I like like being busy I like being busy and feeling like I'm making progress I really really enjoy that so it's just I don't have as much like downtime I'm always doing something but I was kind of always like that anyway in terms of my significant relationships like I still call my family every day they don't live in the same city as me so I try to see them whenever I can I do have a boyfriend and I am very I try to be very cognizant of not letting this get in between you know my relationship with him and my friends I do choose to spend time with him and spend time with friends and make sure that they feel appreciated and that might mean like you know, not being the first one to get my video up sometimes. And so you have to kind of make those trade-offs. And that's like with any job, right? It's like any job. Sometimes you got to go, you have to leave your job to go pick up your kids from school. Like you just have to make the time, but it does get harder, especially I need to be filming during the day to like have the light. I don't have like a professional studio or anything like that. Sometimes I have a lot of anxiety about like, oh my gosh, I only have like three more hours of light to be able to film something. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Like it's, it's a lot of hours and you kind of just have to make it work and you have to decide what's worth it and what's not. And for me, I don't mind putting in the hours right now. I'm gonna open up our little kit here. I don't mind putting in the hours right now, especially because I'm not married, I don't have any kids just yet. And so I have a little bit of extra time to like 
hustle, right? I have a little bit of extra time to like hustle and grow. And so that's what I'm trying to do. Okay, let's look at the kit. Sorry, I've been talking so much. Hopefully you guys are still watching. So here we go. Transform, I'm gonna read this little pamphlet. Transform and transfix with the subversive shine and iconic shade shifting illumination of Dark Star 006 V3 version BR Sextra Galactic. Like what a name. <laughs> a tech noir smoky eye kit for intergalactic glamour. It features the trio chrome, trio chrome pigment, VR Sextra Galactic, Mayron Mixing Liquid, a holographic cyber electric eye gloss, and the Permagel Ultra Glide Eye Pencil in Extreme Black for creating the perfect smoky eye. I'm gonna try and do something that's as wearable as possible, all right? But let's do a quick little swatchy right here. So woo, this is the pigment and it looks sick. Oh my gosh, look at that. That is so good. Cool. I love it. Okay, that's really cool. Then we have the little Mayron thing. This this is the same thing that she used to include in a lot of her eye kits when she first launched her brand. We've got the Permagel eyeliner pencil. These are bomb. And then we have this eye gloss. Ooh, let me like put my finger in it. Ooh, oh, that's so cool. I'm really excited to use this. I don't really know what I'm doing. We are gonna supplement it with the mothership that I showed you guys. So let's get into that. Okay, so we've got subliminal right here. And I'm just gonna be going into the mattes first to kind of build up a little bit of a base. And then in like the center of the eye, that's when we're gonna go in with the crazy stuff right here. And obviously we're gonna use the eyeliner also. Bear with me guys, all right? We're gonna, we're gonna get there. Okay, so some of you guys were also, I'm not using a primer by the way. We don't, we don't need to do that today. Some of you guys were also asking me, what do I like to do for fun? Work, just kidding. I like to do all kinds of things for fun. So a little bit about some things that I like to do. Um, I love to shop. <laughs> I love, um, I love luxury. I love fashion. Obviously you guys have seen some of my hats and bags and like my hauls and favorites videos. I'm like that person that loves to go to Saks and different boutiques and just talk to the people that work there and like make friends with them. I also really, really love to bake. I'm a fantastic baker. I know that sounds very conceited, but I love to make beautiful decorative cakes like the milk bar birthday style cakes or like exploding candy cakes. I love cupcakes and candies and macarons, basically any kind of pastry. My first word as a child was chocolate. Yep. I love sweets and candy, anything like that. I'm definitely a foodie. I also am really into wine. You guys may have heard me mention this in another video, but I actually have a level three certificate in wines from WSET. That's basically an organization that does wine education. So if you wanted to educate yourself to become a sommelier, you would take that. And so there's, there's four levels. And so I have completed three of the four levels. So I actually know quite a bit about wine and I love to travel, especially to wine producing regions like Napa Valley, I've been to Argentina, I've obviously been to Greece. I really love to sing and dance, as I mentioned, like I used to be a Zumba instructor, which I know it's not dance, it's dance fitness, but I love fitness, I love dancing, I love singing. I always grew up kind of singing and performing in a choir. I love public speaking. I've always been that person that like, I'm very businessy, but I'm also fun and creative and girly and feminine at the same time. Time. I like to describe myself as a fancy dork because I'm just a dork guys. My favorite shows are like Spongebob and South Park and Rick and Morty. I'm not watching anything serious, but I'm the person that's showing up with the Chanel bag and like the full face of makeup. Like I'm very fancy and bougie, but I'm also just kind of a dork. I'm gonna build up a little bit of depth in the outer corner. I think I'm gonna go in with maybe like this gray color and we'll see how that looks. I also obviously love fitness. It's funny because I literally didn't work out a day in my life until I started doing Zumba after college. Literally never went to the gym at all. Now I'm really into fitness. Zumba really got me into that world just because I loved to dance. And I was like, wow, this is so fun. I love like dancing in a group with other women. It just feels so innately fun. I know I know it's not for everybody. I know I'm kind of like on this, I'm like drinking the Zumba Kool-Aid here, but I love fitness right now. I'm really into running. I also lift weights with a trainer twice a week. So I love weightlifting and it gives me something to something to like do outside of the house as well. I love going out for cocktails, dressing up, 
but I also just love like hanging out with my girlfriends and my boyfriend. You know, it's like as you get older, it's like I'm not really doing anything too crazy. I just love spending quality time with my friends. I'm also super close to my family. My grandparents lived in our house with us growing up and we just had like a, you know, a big like big fat Greek family basically. I, you know, used to go to Greece every summer. Hopefully I'll be able to go this year maybe. I love traveling, love spending time with my family. So, I'm a big like family person. I'm I'm a pretty, I don't know. I'm pretty just like traditional kind of gal, you know what I'm saying? I need to go get a good brush to mix with this Mayron mixing liquid. I'll be right back. All right. So so we're gonna get into this liquid. I'm just taking the little lid off. So I'm just gonna dip my brush. I have a little flat brush here from ColourPop. I'm just gonna like dip it in here and then we're gonna start putting this on our eyes and we're gonna see how it goes. Mixing it up here. <laughs> I'm nervous. I'm also doing this in the phone camera. Like I don't have a mirror or anything. I have one like off to the side, but... <gasps> Heck yes. Oh my gosh, Mama Pat. So another question that you guys asked me is like, what's your favorite? Several of you asked me like, what's your favorite makeup brand of all time? Honestly, guys, I think it's Pat McGrath. Like I, had, I really had to think about that. And somebody said like, what's your favorite for like a full face? I don't know. That one is hard. That's hard because there's so many different. I'm trying to kind of wing it out a little bit like in the photos. I really do like Charlotte Tilbury, but... I don't think that Charlotte Tilbury makes me feel creative. I think Pat McGrath is the brand that makes me feel the most creative. Whereas Charlotte Tilbury, I think she has really beautiful wearable styles. Pat McGrath is really the brand where when she launched her brand, I thought, oh my gosh, that looks amazing. Those first kits that she came out with were so, so cool. I still have some of the products from those kits. As you can see, I used like that highlighter today. That was one of them. So yeah, I think maybe Pat McGrath. And then somebody else asked me like, what's your favorite eyeshadow palette of all time? Or like, if you could only keep one. And that's a really hard question because there's just so many eyeshadow palettes out there. If I could only keep one palette, it probably would be something from Viseart maybe because I just really love their formula and I love how wearable their palettes are. I would have to pick something that ha isn't a quad that has like more than four colors. I really do like Pat McGrath eyeshadows. It's just like her motherships aren't what I usually reach for like day to day. It really depends on the day. And it's hard for me to pick just one because they all have such cool, interesting color stories. Guys, this is just so cool. Like, look at that. I think that this was pretty easy to apply. I'm not gonna try and do anything like crazy graphic with this. I'm basically gonna take the mothership and the pencil and use that to kind of finish out the look and then we'll put the gloss in the middle. I hope that you guys are finding this interesting because I'm just I'm just kind of like babbling on it <laughs> at this point. I'm really just trying to talk about myself. You guys said you wanted a Q&A, so hopefully this hopefully people watch this. I am just building a little bit of depth in the outer corner. This is a Refer 26. This is a nice little pointy brush. One of you guys also asked me, how do you wash your nicer makeup brushes? If you go to my Instagram story highlights, so go to the profile page and then scroll back. It is one of the first Instagram story highlights that I have on there. And it's a whole little story about how I wash my brushes. I basically use like a very gentle cleaner. I think it's called Alori. I will put a link to it down below. And I use the unscented kind, but they have a whole bunch of like really nice fun scents. And it's very, very gentle on these kind of like natural hair brushes, especially if you have even more expensive ones from like Chikahoto or Sonia G or anything like that. I just kind of wash them in the sink really gently, trying not to get water into the ferrule. And then I will gently blot them on one of those big like dish wash, like dish absorbing mats. You know, like when you put your dishes out to dry, they have those big mats. They're extremely absorbent. I'll kind of blot them on that and I'll gently just lay them around the mat so on their sides so that they can dry. I find that that works very, very well. And I'll kind of take a little microfiber towel if I need to and absorb some extra 
moisture from the brush, but that's how I like to clean them. I think this is looking cute. What do you guys think? This mothership really is the perfect complement, but if you guys have any other kind of cool tone palette or just something that has like gray and black mattes, then I think you're gonna be good. Let's go in with the eyeliner here and see if we can even make like a even more dramatic eye. I'm just gonna wing it out a little bit here in the direction of the shadow. The thing about this Permajol eyeliner, you can smudge it, but it's not gonna be smudgeable for that long, so you gotta really work fast. I'm smudging it out here along the lash line, and then I'm just dragging it up into that crease a bit. And we'll clean up the edges at the end, don't you worry. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna try and attempt to make this even more graphic by drawing the line again and then kind of like going into the crease like that. I'm using a little bit of like the eye shadow from the mothership here to sort of blend that all in. So I like how that's looking so far. I think I'm just going to apply a little bit of the matte colors on my lower lash line. I'm gonna go into this Skin Show shade right here. I think that's what it's normally called, like Skin Show blah, blah, blah. <laughs> skin Show blah, 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 I'm such a great YouTuber. I'm just gonna put that in the inner corner here. Okay, I'm gonna go clean this up a little bit and then we're gonna put the eye gloss on. Okay, I'm back. I cleaned it up a little bit. I just had to kind of create a little bit of definition and then I went back in with the liner and I just put a little bit extra on kind of the outer corner. I also took the holographic or like the duochrome, whatever we're calling it, and put a little bit underneath here. And I'm really liking this. And the benefit of this as well is that there's no fallout because it's not glittery. It's like that really smooth kind of like baked gelé texture. So yeah, I think it looks absolutely stunning. We are gonna do the eye gloss next. Then we'll do the lips real quick. And then I'll put on some lashes and we'll call it a night. We're going in with the eye gloss. Ooh. I'm going in with that same ColourPop brush just because I don't want to get too many brushes dirty. I don't want to put too much on because then it might wipe it off. Okay, I can see in my mirror over there, it's adding a little bit of glitz. Let's do the other eye. And just do it in the center, otherwise it's going to wipe everything away. Okay, I like that. I think this looks beautiful. I love this. I think that you can use all of these products interchangeably, especially like the eyeliner is amazing. And then the Mayron Mixing Liquid, you can use with all of the other like astral shades and her motherships. This is the thing that I feel like I won't use as much, but the shadow, you can kind of like put this in the center of the lid for kind of like a beam of, you know, duochrome with so many other types of looks. We're gonna go in with a lip liner next. So I have contour and then I have half naked. These are the two new ones. I think I'm gonna go in with half naked. I will swatch this for you guys here because this is kind of like the pinkier of the two and it's basically the perfect match for the flirtatious blush that I had. Let's see, what other questions do I have? that I didn't answer. Some of you guys were asking me, where am I from? Like, what's my ethnicity? As I mentioned in the beginning, I'm originally from New Jersey. My dad is from Greece. He came here when he was pretty young with his family. He's about like eight or nine years old. I grew up with that side of the family. And then my mom uh, grew up in kind of like a military family. And she is a mixture of German, Irish, and Polish. So I am like a quarter German, one eighth Irish, one eighth Polish, and then half Greek. So I kind of just tell people that I'm Greek American. Yeah, as I mentioned, like I've I've been to Greece many times. I love it there. I've also been to Ireland. I've also been to Germany. I haven't been to Poland yet. But shout out to all my international viewers. If you're from any of those countries or if you're from Europe, I can't wait to go back to Europe. I'm dying to. I really have only been traveling like within the US recently. So I'm really hoping this year maybe I can make it to Greece or to Europe. So we have half naked lip liner all over the lips. Now I'm going to go in with her lipstick in Dream Lover. This is my favorite Pat McGrath lipstick. It's also one of my favorite nudes ever. Watch. Mm. It's kind of like Charlotte Tilbury pillow talk, but just a little bit more nude. I think it goes good with this very bold eye look. I'm topping that off with a little bit of her gloss in Faux Real. This is the perfect nude gloss from Pat. I love her glosses. They are the best. And I love the vanilla like cupcake scent slash flavor that they come with. Okay, guys, I'm going to go put on some of this Dark Star mascara. I don't really like this mascara. I actually got this as a free gift when I ordered this kit and a bunch of the other things that I bought in the sale. But we're going to put it on anyway. And then I'm going to put on some lashes and I'll be right back. Okay, friends, this is the final look. What do we think? Uh, uh, uh. 
mm, I think it looks good. If anything, I think maybe I'll put on like a little more blush or something like that, but I really, really like these products. I hope that you guys enjoyed me demoing with them. I hope you guys had some fun today. I hope you guys liked hearing a little bit about me. If you guys like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Comment down below and let me know what you think of my look. I, I really like this. I highly recommend this kit. I think it's fantastic. I think it's a little bit overpriced. It is $50, but you are getting several products in there. So if you guys can get it in one of the recent sales, I highly recommend. I got it for 50% off. I'm gonna link all the products that I use in the description box down below in case you guys just wanna check those out. And that's all I have to say. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.